It's 3 a.m. in the morning in California right now, and we're about to watch a rocket launch a lander to Mars. It's come a long way to get here. It's got a long way to go, and we're really excited to see it launch, but we don't know if it's going to go up because it's really foggy and the weather might not cooperate. So we'll see what happens. Prop 1, initiate fuel fill sequence. Roger. We're here outside of Vandenberg Air Force Base in Southern California, and we've come to see NASA's InSight lander launch to Mars. It's the first time that NASA has ever sent an interplanetary mission from the West Coast. I'm excited to be here because I've been following the InSight mission, literally. The lander was developed in Littleton, Colorado, and back in February, Lockheed Martin invited me along when they moved it from there to Vandenberg, first by semi-trailer to Buckley Air Force Base, then by C-17 cargo plane to California. But coming here is my chance to watch InSight go to space and to watch it with the people who have been working on this mission for years. It's awesome. It's awesome to be less than a day away from launching. I've been on this project for seven years, so I've devoted seven years of my life to getting to this point. Tom Hoffman is the project manager for the InSight mission, and he has a unique challenge on his hands. Previous Mars spacecraft have studied the planet's surface and atmosphere, but InSight is the first to look way beneath the surface. NASA's biggest goals are to understand how Mars formed billions of years ago and to tease out what exactly the planet's interior is made of. The lander has a couple major instruments to carry out those goals. One is a self-hammering nail that will burrow underground and take the planet's temperature. The other is a seismometer, which will measure Mars quakes. So the main way that we are going to be studying the interior is by listening and feeling for Mars quakes. Yeah, so the fact that Mars is cooling down, it's still cooling down after four and a half billion years ago, it's shrinking. That, that shrinking creates like a cracking effect, which is creates the Mars quakes. And how exactly does studying quakes tell us what's inside the planet? Doing seismology is kind of like doing an ultrasound. So just like an ultrasound uses sound waves to see what's inside your body, we can use uh, seismic waves to see what's inside of Mars. So we get an idea of what the size of the core is, the size of the mantle, and the size of the crust, what those boundaries are between each of those. And in fact, uh, with enough Mars quakes, we can even understand what is sort of the main constituents. What's the main thing in the mantle? What's the main thing in the core? For any of that science to happen, though, we need those instruments to work, which means they've got to survive the trip to Mars. And that's where engineers like Farah come in. My name is Farah Alave and I'm a payload systems engineer on InSight. So my job, once we received those instruments, was to make sure that we, we put the instruments and the lander through all the environments that it's going to see between now and landing and on the Martian surface. So we put, literally put the whole spacecraft on the table and shake it as hard as we can. It is terrifying. It is, it's the worst, but, but. What it, is it like to watch that? Um, we, I don't watch it, it's just too, too scary. But that's to show that it's going to survive not only only the launch environment, which you can imagine if you're on the top of a rocket, is, is pretty shaky, but also the landing environment, that's actually the worst case, is the entry, descent, and landing environment when you're entering the atmosphere and uh, the heat shield is shaking you around. It's so crazy to think that InSight's going to go through such an intense launch, this cruise, this crazy landing and then it's going to be still <laughs> for the rest of its life. Yeah, uh, that's part of like going to space or going to another place, right? right? It's sort of like we want this lander to be as quiet as possible and it's going to measure the tiniest little measurements, but in the meantime, it has to get through the harshness of space before it gets there. It's the night of the launch and we've been getting some sketchy updates on the weather. There's a layer of fog rolling in that could make it hard for us to see the rocket and could even make it hard for NASA to launch the rocket. But we've finally gotten a look up close at the Atlas V, and it is amazing. So the tower is rolling away right now very slowly, but as you can see, the Atlas V has been revealed. And there's InSight right at the top. For now, all we can do is nap at the hotel and wait. I got 30 minutes. Should be enough for the next two hours, right? Oh God.
So it sounds like weather isn't going to be an issue for the launch today, but it's definitely getting much foggier out here. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Insight. Three, two, zero. And liftoff of the Atlas V. Anyone's got an eye on it? <laughs> <laughs> the space cooldown has begun. Cocoa Pyro Valve has been fired. All indications are that it launched successfully. It's still got a ways to go. You know, it's got about an hour and a half of flight left, I believe. But, uh. <laughs> we didn't see shit. <laughs> oh, I'm delirious. It's 4 a.m. <laughs> And we just saw nothing. <laughs> In the end, the launch was a bit of a bust for us. But that's not how NASA saw it. I'm super excited. This is like my first mission leaving Earth orbit. Uh, I, I just, I cannot even describe how I feel. I keep like stopping and kind of being like, <laughs> we're going. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is video two of our new Verge Science YouTube channel. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button because we've got new videos out every week. Thanks for watching.